お茶を飲みますかお茶。これは何ですかこれは急須です。急須は日本のティーポットです。これでお茶を入れます。これは何ですかこれは湯飲みです。日本のティーカップです。これでお茶を飲みます。じゃあ、これは何ですか ?Or should I say 何と何ですかこれは急須と湯飲みです。急須と湯飲み。湯飲み is literally something you use for hot water drink. This pattern of saying something to something use the particle to Equivalent to the English and. For example, これとこれは日本語で何ですか猫と犬ですね。猫と犬。とても可愛いですね。But this と can only be used to combine nouns. For example, we have already seen the sentence. バスケとアメフトが好きです。So now, let's try to say I'm interested in anime and manga. The phrase to have an interest in is something に興味があります。Don't forget to combine アニメ and 漫画 using the particle と。アニメと漫画に興味があります。Let's try it with two new words. 歴史 is history and 文化 is culture. So, how do you say Japanese history and culture? そうです。It's 日本の歴史と文化。Let's try to combine that noun phrase with the pattern I'm interested in. 日本の歴史と文化に興味があります。You should try saying that to a Japanese person and they may teach you some interesting cultural or historical facts. Can you say a younger brother and a younger sister? That's 妹と弟。How could you say I have a younger brother and sister? You can use the verb iru. If you want to express I, you attach watashi ni wa. Watashi ni wa, ototo to imoto ga imas. Remember, for people and other living things, you need to use iru and say imas. Literally, a younger brother and a younger sister exist for me. What about sons and daughters? Daughter is musume and son is musuko. Can you say I have a daughter and a son? Watashi ni wa musume to musuko ga imas. But as I have said, と can only be used when combining nouns. If you want to combine adjectives like fresh and tasty, you cannot use the particle と. And you can't use it to combine verbs either. Like I got up and took a shower. So what do we do when we want to combine adjectives or verbs? In those cases, we use a new form called the て form. In this lesson, we will focus on the te forms of the adjectives and the copula followed by a noun. 
The verb te forms are so useful that we will cover them separately in the next two lessons. The primary function of the te forms is linking two or more adjectives, verbs, or phrases. Let's say you want to say small and light. Here, you need to use the two adjectives, chisai and karui, which is the new word for lightweight. When you combine two adjectives, only the first one must be changed to the te form. The second one will have the ending appropriate for whichever function it has in the sentence. Just to show you what the te form does, I will go ahead and give you the te form for chisai, small. It is chisakute. That means small and. Then the second adjective will follow to complete the combination. Chisakute karui. So if you want to say this is a small and light bag, you say kore wa Chisakute karui kaban desu. Kaban means bag. Now, let's say I want to buy a small and light bag. Chisakute karui kaban ga kaitai desu. That's the pattern introduced two lessons ago. Verb stem plus tai desu. The direct object can have either the particle o or ga with tai desu. So, how do you obtain the te form? With the e adjectives, you remove the e ending and attach ku te. That's it. Let's do a few examples. I'll say the adjective and you say the te form. Oki, oki ku te. Nagai, naga ku te. Takai, taka ku te. Kawaii, kawaii kute. Now, let's say big and heavy, where heavy is omoi. So big and heavy is oki kute omoi. Can you say this book is big and heavy? Start with the topic kono hon wa. Kono hon wa. Okikute omoi desu. Now, let's use the new adjective amai, which means sweet. Amai is sweet and omoi is heavy. What's the te form for amai? So desu. Amakute. Amakute. Now, here's the combination I like. Can you say sweet and tasty? Amakute oishi. I have been living in the peach state of Georgia for many years. So let me use the word momo, which is peach. Let's try this sentence. The peaches are sweet and tasty. Momo wa amakute oishi desu. Now, can you change that sentence into the past tense? As introduced in lesson 13, in order to get the E adjective past affirmative form, you need to change the adjective oishi to oishikatta. You are replacing the E ending with katta. So, how do you say the past sentence? The peaches were sweet and tasty. Momo wa amakute oishikatta desu. Now, let's look at the na adjectives and the copula with noun desu. For those two categories, you attach de either directly to the noun or to the adjective stem. Leave out the na ending or the copula desu when attaching de. Let's try it with the na adjective kire na. It means both pretty and clean. What's the te form? Kire de. Let's combine it with quiet. Can you say pretty and quiet? Quiet is shizukana. Kire de shizukana. 
So, how do we say there is a pretty and quiet park? Park is koen, and there is something is arimasu. Kirei de shizukana koen ga arimasu. Let's look at another example. What's the te form for hima na? Hima means not busy or free or having a lot of free time. Hima de. Now, let's combine it with tsumaranai, which means boring. Hima de tsumaranai. Using that phrase, we can say, I've got little to do and it's boring every day. Mai nichi hima de tsumaranai. Let's move on to the noun te forms. It may be easier to understand if we start with two separate sentences. For example, that person is my friend and that person is American. First sentence first. That person is anohito and friend is tomodachi. Anohito wa watashi no tomodachi desu. The phrase watashi no is optional. If it's clear from the context, no need to use it. Now, how about the second sentence? That person is American. American person is America Jin. Ano hito wa America Jin desu. You've got the two sentences to combine now. Since the first sentence contains noun desu, you change it to the te form, which is noun de. Ano hito wa watashi no tomodachi de Amerika jin desu. Now, let's try to say Sophie is a Canadian and an English and French teacher. The first part is Sophie is a Canadian. Instead of this here, let's go ahead and use the te form. Sophie san wa Kanada jin de the nationality words with the jing are always nouns and not adjectives. How about the second clause? An English and French teacher. Remember to combine the two languages with the particle to. Eigo to Fransu go no sensei desu. Together, those two parts form one sentence. Sophie san wa Kanada jin de. By the way, the two main parts that get combined do not have to be adjective and adjective or noun and noun. Anything can follow a noun te form or an adjective te form. Here's an example. Muzukashikute yoku wakarimasen. Yoku is the adverb of i or yoi, which means good. So, yoku is the equivalent of well. But I have also used it for the other meaning, which is often. Eiga ga tsuki de yoku mimasu. So, can you say, I like books and I read often? Book is hon, and to read is yomu. How about the similar sentence? I'm uncomfortable with cooking and don't do it much. Can you say the first part? You should use the adjective nigate na here. Yori ga nigate de. Let's end the sentence with I don't do it much. Not very much is amari plus negative. The verb is suru shimasu, but use the negative shimasen. Ryori ga nigate de amari shimasen. Minasan, wakarimashita ka? Te form wa benri desu kara tsukaimashou ne? We'll use te forms in the activity section. 
But let me also teach you a few more things. One thing is when to use ski desk, which shows the state of liking something, being fond of something. Suppose you have just tasted something and you liked it for the first time. In a case like that, you cannot use ski desk quite yet. The first reaction of liking something is really an action rather than a state. So we use an action verb for coming into a state of liking. What we say is something ga kini iru, which means roughly to take a liking to something. The literal meaning is to enter someone's feeling. When you have just tasted food or drink, or just watched a movie, or visited an interesting place for the first time, you should say "kini iri mashita," and after some period of staying fond of it, you can finally say "suki desu." By contrast, what if someone says "suki deshita"? That is not a way to say "I liked it." Right after experiencing something, "suki deshita" usually means "I used to like something." 子供の時、アニメが好きでしたけど、今はあまり好きじゃないです。In the activity, we'll read a postcard that Sharon is sending to her good friend Yukari from the city of Kanazawa in Ishikawa Prefecture, located on the Sea of Japan. Kanazawa was a flourishing Culturally important city during the Edo period, and you can enjoy many historical attractions there. By far, the most popular place is Kenroku En Garden, which dates from the mid 17th century and was gradually developed and expanded over two centuries. It is considered one of the three best gardens in Japan. It used to be part of the nearby castle and belonged to the area's ruling clan, the Maedas. But the garden has been open to public in the 1870s. Kenroku En wa hiroi desu. Hiroi. Kenroku En ni wa. 古い木がたくさんあります。古い。While visiting the garden, Sharon took some photos which are 写真。写真。She promises Yukari to show them to her, and that verb is 見せる in Japanese. It's a ru verb. 見せる。それでは皆さん。聞きましょう。Here is what Sharon has written to Yukari on the postcard from Kanazawa. Yukari さんへ、お元気ですか？私は今、金沢にいます。初めてここに来ましたが、とても気に入りました。昨日は県六園に行きました。広くて。とてもいいところですよ。兼六園には古くて大きくて面白い木がたくさんあります。来週写真を見せますね。それではまた会いましょう。お土産を持って帰ります。シャロンより。で買えるアスヴニアギフト、which is お土産。The verb 持って帰る is a compound verb consisting of 持って、which means to hold or carry, and 帰る、which means to go back home. This word 帰る can also be found in the frequently used phrase "Welcome back home," which is お帰りなさい。Which starts the next part of the dialogue. 
Sharon comes back to Tokyo one week later and stops by at Yukari's place. Sharon さん、お帰りなさい。旅行はどうでしたかとても楽しかったですよ。はい、これはお土産です。ああ、どうもありがとうございます。それで、金沢はどんな町でしたか古い町で歴史があります。とてもいい町ですよ。そうですか。よかったですね。ああ、私も旅行がしたいです。ゆかりさんはいつも仕事が忙しそうですよね。ええ、でも仕事は楽しくて、好きですから構いません。でもいつか一緒に旅行に行きましょうね。ええ、もちろん。私はいつでも大丈夫です。Did you hear where Sharon and Yukari talked about a possible trip together sometime in the future?Trip or travel is 旅行 in Japanese. You can form the verb phrases 旅行をする or 旅行に行く。Sharon and Yukari used three very common time expressions with the root いつ meaning when. いつも、いつか、いつでも。いつも means all the time or always. Yukari さんはいつも忙しそうですね。いつか means sometime or someday. いつか旅行に行きましょうね。いつでも means anytime or no matter when. 私はいつでも大丈夫です。Now, Please go back and listen to the postcard monologue and the dialogue again. You should try each of them multiple times. I also want you to notice how many noun and adjective te forms are used. By now, you should be quite comfortable with all of the hiragana and katakana. Ganbarimashita ne! From this lesson, we will be learning more and more of the Chinese characters called kanji. Learning kanji means two things. First, there is learning to recognize and write the shape of the kanji. Some kanji you've learned so far have been simple ideograms, but for the rest, you can learn to break each kanji into a small number of parts or components. The most important part is called the radical. Second are the sounds for each kanji. Most characters have at least one reading that came from China called onyomi, as well as at least one native Japanese reading called kunyomi. Which reading to use depends on the context, so I will not introduce all possible readings. We have already looked at the kanji for day or sun, which is ki, and has a few different readings. Besides the character for sun, we also saw the character for moon or month in the kanji for Monday. It's a pictograph representing a crescent moon. It's a relatively simple four stroke character. The kun reading is tsuki, and it means both moon and month, just like the English word month is related to the word moon. Tsuki. The on reading is getsu or gatsu. Getsu yobi. 1月 So, that was the kanji for moon. Let's combine sun with moon to make a new character. 
The sun and the moon combined are bright. It's used in the word akarui, which means bright. Actually, it's said that originally the half of the character represented a window instead of the sun, meaning the moon brightened the room through the window. But today, it's the sun and the moon making it doubly bright. Akarui. This has eight strokes, but don't worry. It's made up of the two characters you have already learned. The word ashita means tomorrow. It uses two characters, bright plus day. Bright day. Ashita. Now, let's look at a character with a shape similar to the character for sun. It's the kanji for I. This is another pictograph based on the shape of an eye. By itself, this new character reads me, which is the word for I in Japanese. Me. This character is taller than the sun character with one extra stroke inside. Let's add two more strokes to that I kanji, almost like leg. Miru. This adds a part that represents a person. The bottom part is actually a variant form of hito. It's just pushed down into a short, wide shape so it fits at the bottom of a character. Just adding the two bottom strokes to the character for I changes it into the character for to see or to show. The next character is bum which means sentence. The next character can be combined to form the word bunka, which means culture. Bunka. The kanji for person, hito, can also be modified to appear on the left side of a character, where it gets squished into a tall, narrow shape. Actually, the component on the right side also represents a person. But this one is upside down. So this character represents transformation. After introducing new kanji, I will be including them in our bum or sentences with the help of the furigana as a reminder and reading aid. But you should also practice your reading and writing of new characters. Flashcards, either on cards you make or using a digital app, can be quite helpful practice for some people. Lenshu shimashou. Lenshu means practice. Sore dewa, konkai wa kore de owari desu. Ashita wa akarui hi desu yo. Mata aimashou.